Pastor Mark, the question is, should we prepare physically also for the Sunday law as much as spiritually? Should we prepare for the coming crisis that's going to come when no man can buy or sell? It's a very interesting question, and one has to understand the sequence here. So the Bible teaches that there's a little time of trouble that precedes the great time of trouble. So when, the, when church and state unite and a national Sunday law is enforced, there will be a time during that period where no man could buy or sell. During that, or during that period of time, there will be opportunity for us to grow gardens, for us to, the National Sunday Law is the last call to leave the major cities. We are, will be living in remote areas and preparing in these remote areas for the coming of Christ. Then, as everybody has an opportunity to make their final decision from the time of the National Sunday Law, the Mark of the Beast, until the close of probation, then during that time, we do make physical preparation. But after the close of probation, when everybody has made their final irrevocable decision, when that ha once that has taken place, then we will no longer have to prepare because it's at that point that our bread and water will be sure. It's at that point that the angels will feed us. Um, you find that in the Bible very, very carefully. Uh, Isaiah 33, verse 14, uh, and uh, onward, it, it, it talks about the fact that, that uh, our bread and water will be sure. And so we can have confidence at that time that God's going to feed us. Pastor Mark, the question is, uh, looking at the end time events and at the rate at which the world is moving now, uh, will we reach 2030 without a Sunday law being forced? Is there any way we, um, that we could know that? Are we going to make it to 2030, Pastor Mark? Well, I don't know if we're going to make it to 2025, uh, you know, so things are moving quite fast. Um, yeah. But here is, a, there's a couple of things that I think are, are really important to understand from a biblical standpoint. Um, you know, you look at scripture and the Bible says in the book of Romans, it says, for he will cut the work, he will finish his work and cut it short in righteousness. So God is going to cut his work very, very short. Things, the final movement is going to be very, very rapid. If you look, for example, at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, speaking of the disciples in, in Christ's day, you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So God predicts the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Revelation 18, verse 1 says that the earth is going to be filled with the glory of God. Habakkuk 2, verse 14 and 15 says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God um, as waters cover the sea. Um, there in Matthew 24, verse 14, it says that in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached as all the world to a witness to all nations. So God is not waiting for something on the calendar. He's not waiting for more earthquakes, famines, fire, floods, not even waiting for a national Sunday law. He's waiting for a spiritual revival among his people where the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. The earth is lightened with the glory of God. The gospel goes to the ends of the earth. And that event hastens the crisis that, that takes place. That event allows the angels to let the winds of strife go because Revelation 7 verse 1 and 2 says that the angels will hold the winds of strife till the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads. So what is God waiting for? The proclamation of the gospel to the ends of the earth by a people that love him, that give glory to his name, and a people who are committed to him. Then he'll let these winds of strife blow. And so the National Sunday Law and these final events could be ushered in very, very, very quickly. Financial institutions all over the world are undergoing a transformation that is preparing the ground for the coming Sunday law, or the mark of the beast. This will have a significant impact on you. Watch this video next for the details.